Welcome everyone. My name is Sandra Agrim. I'm a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft and I'm so happy to be here with one of our engineering folks with she from the Gradle team for VS Code. And yes, she can can you maybe introduce yourself? Yeah. Hello everyone. I'm Shi from VS Code Java team and uh, today I'm very happy to share the content of Gradle experience in VS Code to all of you. Wonderful. So if I want to start with Gradle in my VS Code, what do I need to have installed? Yeah, to get the full support uh, for Gradle in VS Code, and uh, you need to install two extensions. Now the first one is the extension pack for Java. Now this extension pack includes some useful extensions, such as language support for Java, debug for Java, and the test runner for Java. And the second one is Gradle for Java extension. Now it provides some specific Gradle supports in VS Code. Okay, and which specific Gradle support do I get? How can I use it? Yeah, you you need to open a Gradle project first. Now here I, I use the sample Gradle project. It's the Spring Boot web applications project. And uh, you can also easily get this project via the Gradle official page. And uh, after you have installed the Gradle extension, and uh, you will see a Gradle icon in the activity bar. And uh, let's try it. You will see uh, several views here. Now. The first view is the Gradle projects view. Now the view lists all, all the available projects found in the workspace. Now here you can you can find the layer Spring Boot demo and the app. And uh, in under each project, you can find a tasks node and the dependencies node. Now in the tasks node, you can find all the available tasks in the project. And uh, in the dependencies node, you can find all the dependencies uh, under the project. And uh, it will be very useful if you want to check if your dependencies is import, are imported to your project successfully. Great. And what other things do I see there? There's something called pin task and recent task. How can I use those things? Yeah, the pin the pinned tasks view is is used for if you want to pin some favorite tasks and you can see it all, uh, more frequently. So I can check I, I I can try to pin this check task here, and you will see the pin tasks had the list check tasks. And if I close the Gradle projects view, we can also see the check tasks here. And, and then uh, I can execute it from there. Yeah, we can the also execute task. from from here. Okay. Yeah, we can run this task here. And I get all the logs in the terminal. Yeah. Pretty uh, may, maybe it more it may need uh, several seconds because my computer is sharing through teams. Oh, you can see the task is successfully. Now and if something is not correct, can I also debug using Gradle here? Yeah, sure. And uh, but uh, before debugging, we should declare some configurations here. Now it's named Gradle.JavaDebug, and uh, you can see here I I de I have declared the test task under the app projects. Now it's here. Now you can see currently the test the test task have have has an extra debug button here. And uh, let me check the breakpoint is here, and uh, let's start debugging. And uh, the debugging process will collaborate with uh, with uh, Java debugger extension, and mm -hmm. uh, it will help you to debug the Gradle tasks. So just wait a minute. 
Okay, you will see the breakpoint uh, is heated and uh, the variables view can show the variables in the test class. And uh, we can continue the, and uh, finish this debugging. And uh, for the recent tasks view, and uh, you, you can see uh, the recently run the task here. And you remember the check tasks and the test task. They are all, all here. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the Gradle demons view, it will help you to manage your Gradle demons. And uh, you can easily stop a demon, or you can choose to stop all the demons here. Now, that's all the Gradle Explorer features. When would I stop all my Gradle demons? Mm -hmm. So, have you ever done this? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Sorry. maybe that's just if, if they explode, you're able to do it. Okay, yeah. so that's nice. But with Gradle, I usually have this build.gradle file, right? Where I specify all my dependencies and where this Gradle Projects Explorer will actually look into to get my defined steps and phases in my Gradle process. How can I configure my build.gradle file? Do I also get support with this new Gradle extension? Yeah, that's a good question. Let's come back to the editor. OK, you see I have opened the build.gradle file. Mm -hmm. And uh, overall, we provide the, the syntax highlighting for the Gradle file. You can see the properties such as version and the group will be in blue, and the Java, uh, the method calls such as Java and the repositories will be in yellow, and uh, it will help you di distinguish different parts of the Gradle file. And uh, besides, we have the outline view for you, and uh, su suppose you you have scrolled down to the end of the Gradle file. And uh, you can easily click the plugins uh, closure here, and it will help you to navigate to the plugins closure in the editor. Oh, that's impressive, especially if my build.gradle file just gets bigger and bigger. So it's probably so much easier to then find where I want to go to. And yeah. you also get other help, such as syntax highlighting, or not just syntax highlighting, but also auto completion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, suppose I have to declare some dependencies, such as uh, a test dependency is JUnit. Let's let's begin to declare this dependency. Mm -hmm. Test implementation. Okay, now you can see the test implementation uh, is listed here. Now we can choose this. And uh, Suppose, suppose we want to declare a JUnit dependency and uh, press on column. And uh, currently, our extension will help you to search in the Maven Central and uh, find uh, all the available dependencies in JUnit group ID. And uh, we, choose, we, we choose the first one, uh, the dependency with artifact ID is also JUnit. And uh, we press column again. And uh, you will see all the available versions in uh, from the artifact, artifact ID is JUnit. And uh, you can choose the newest one. So and it gets those num numbers from Maven Central, I suppose? Yes. OK, yeah. so I don't have to check myself any longer. I can just trust my Gradle extension to, to get all those numbers for me, and I don't need to go in my browser and check on Maven Central myself. That, that's yeah, nice. Yeah. It's bring more convenience for you. Yeah, and, and if uh, I would do a dumb mistake, like missing a column, would, would the extension also help me? Yeah, it's also help you. So suppose uh, here I can manually make a mis mistake. So such as this. And uh, we can see in the problems view, the extension reports an error. And uh, this error report will help you fix this bug. 
you know, like 10 years ago when I learned Java programming in university, we got like punished very hard if we missed one of those brackets. And we were all like, shouldn't an IDE be smart enough to just warn us? And now it's totally there. So please, my former professors, if you see that, can you please do differently? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'm very happy that we have all these features. And as I'm here with you, one of the experts for Graded and VS Code, do you have any tips and tricks to share? Okay. Now, uh, Previously, I mentioned two extensions. Now, the first one is extension pack, and uh, the second one is Gradle. Now, the extension pack uh, is designed for Java projects. Now, it provides some Java features, such as you can find uh, a Java doc for a given Java types in the Java, in the Java file. And uh, you can also go to definitions for this type. And uh, these features are provided uh, from the extension pack for Java. And uh, for all the features I just demoed, and uh, they are come from Gradle for Java, and uh, they are Gradle specific features. So I'm hearing that those two extensions, or one extension pack and the Gradle extension, work very closely and perfectly together for my Java development with Gradle. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. And if I want to contribute, so let's say I find any issues in the Gradle extension or I miss a feature I totally need, can I can I just ping you or what, do you have a proper process here? Yeah, as uh, as we know, our extension are open source project, and uh, you can find in our extension homepage, and uh, our repository is is uh, here, and uh, you can. Go to the repository and uh, file an issue there, and uh, I think we can discuss the issues there. That's neat. So if I find an issue and I know a solution, I could also do a pull request to solve the issue or to help you solving the issue. Yeah, yeah. Each pull request are welcome. <laughs> That's very cool. I really love the community process here because it really helps us all also to to be just so much faster. You know, the smartest and fastest one then will always win, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you so much, Xi. It was so great to be here with you. I just learned that I don't need to go to Maven Central to um, get the version numbers of my dependencies. So I can just use the tooling here, as well as it has perfect support for me for auto-completion, as well as some, at least all the dumpest, if, errors it will find for me as well. So if I have some syntax errors, I will also get wonderful help here. And then it works perfectly together with the Java extension package. So I can leverage from the testing, debugging, Java language features provided by Red Hat. That's just amazing. Thank you so much. It's so great to see how VS Code for Java developers is evolving, especially during the past months, don't you think? Yeah, thank you, Sandra. <laughs> Thanks. Have a great day. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.